All right, welcome back, Yes Prep. Uh, my name is Keith DeRosier, and we are going to continue in the video series as we get ready for the upcoming test on Units 1 and 2. In Unit 1, we focused on limits. Um, after that, that led us nicely into slope of the tangent line, finding the derivative at a particular point. And now in the second unit, we're looking at the derivative as a function itself. So given the graph of a function, we're going to look now at the derivative. Um, but for this part portion of the video, we're going to focus just on how do we find the slope of the tangent line. Another way, word for that is how do we find the derivative. And so we've got some visuals that we're going to go through here. We've been finding the slope of a line for a very long time. Like way back in Algebra 1, we you know, would put a, a line on the graph, or we'd graph a line, sorry. And in order to find the slope of this line, we would pick two points on the line. Say these are my little pink dots over here. I would find the slope between those using change in y over change in x, and we'd be done. And we would expect to get a positive slope since this line here is increasing. Well, in pre-calculus, we started talking about this same line now as a line that intersects a graph. So, for example, we have the graph of a parabola. The line that I'm showing right now actually intersects the graph twice. That's what these pink beads represent. That's the intersection points. Since the, the line intersects the graph in two places, we're going to call this a secant line. Well, how do we find the slope of a secant line? We're still going to do change in y over change in x. I'm going to take y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. No big deal. Really, all of that was preparing us for this idea of the slope of a tangent line. In geometry, we learned that a tangent line is something that just touches a circle once. Here, we're going to talk about tangent lines to the curve. So the line that touches the parabola just once at this point is going to have positive slope. The tangent line that touches the parabola at its vertex will have zero slope. The tangent line that touches it where the function is decreasing will have negative slope. Now the issue becomes how do you find the slope of a line if all you know is one point? And so fortunately, we have some calculus. And the calculus involved is this. We're going to pick a point on the graph. Let's say it's right here. The coordinates are going to be a comma f of a. If my tangent line, here it is, much bigger than before, my tangent line touches that graph just once, well, we're going to have a problem because I need two points to determine the slope of a line. So what we do is we pick a second point, say this point over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to allow the second point to get closer and closer and closer and closer to the first point, so close that you can't tell them apart anymore. And so when we first did that in class, we referred to this point over here as x comma f of x. The way I would find the slope, I do my rise over my run. The rise is f of x minus f of a over x minus a. That would give me the slope of the secant line connecting these two points. And that's great, but remember, our goal is to find the slope of the tangent line. I want this bead over here to get as close to that one as possible. And that's where we introduce this notation limit as x approaches a. So if I need to find the derivative or the slope of the tangent line at a particular point, I can use this formula. The limit as x approaches a, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And that'll tell me the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at the point x equals a. Other notations that we have, we say that's f prime of a. We might also say uh, use dy over dx, that's the change in y over x evaluated at x equals a. That's another notation that we're going to look at. But this is the formula that must be memorized if you want to find the slope of a tangent line at a particular point. Great. After we did that, we evolved into the same graph, 
But instead of just finding the slope of the tangent line over at this point, or the slope of the tangent line at that point, or maybe even the slope of the tangent line over here, I want to find the slope of the tangent line for all points. And what we would do is we pick, again, we're going to pick an arbitrary point. I'm going to call this point x comma f of x. And in order to find the slope of the tangent line here, we're going to pick another point, and I'm going to be very careful in how I label this point. I'm going to call this point x plus h. That means the y value is f of x plus h. Now what does that mean? That means that the horizontal distance from between these two points is h. And what will happen is as the second point gets closer and closer and closer to the first one, we'll actually be able to get the slope of the tangent line. So the formula here will be f of x plus h minus f of x, the change in y, over the change in x. But we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0. If you want to clean this up a little bit, x plus h minus x, the x's cancel out. And we're going to be left with the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. This will give me the derivative everywhere. It's a more powerful version of the derivative. Instead of just finding the slope of a tangent line at a point and then finding the slope of a tangent at another point, once you go through this process, you'll actually be able to find the slope of the tangent line everywhere. So let's give it a shot. Okay, we have a function. The function is f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 1. I want to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals negative 2. So let's just address that part. If I want the slope of the tangent line at negative 2, we need the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x minus f of negative 2 over x minus negative 2. Well, that is the same as limit as x approaches negative 2. 1 over x squared plus 1 minus, if I plug negative 2 into the function for x, we'll get 1 fifth over x plus 2. We're going to need some limit magic here to clean this mess up. So I see fractions up here. I'm going to want to get a common denominator. To do that, I'm going to multiply the first fraction by 5 over 5. I'm going to multiply the second fraction by x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1. Those are both just fancy ones. And we're going to get that it's the limit as x approaches negative 2 of 5 over 5 times x squared plus 1 minus x squared plus 1 over 5 x squared plus 1. All of that is to be divided by x plus 2. Since I have a common denominator, I can make this limit as x approaches negative 2. 5 minus x squared plus 1. To divide by x plus 2, I know we like to keep it, change it, flip it, so I'm just going to write that as times 1 over x plus 2. I can combine what's in the numerator to get limit as x approaches negative 2. 5 minus x squared minus 1. Denominator stays just as it is. Okay, limit. x approaches negative 2. 4 minus x squared. Denominator 5. x squared plus 1 over 1 times x plus 2. Good golly, this is a tricky one. Limit. As x approaches negative 2, 4 minus x squared is a difference of squares. Factors is 2 minus x times 2 plus x. In my the denominator, still 5, x squared plus 1, and x plus 2. Fortunately, the 2 plus x and the x plus 2 are the same. Those are common factors. I can now plug in the negative 2, so I don't write the limit anymore. 2 minus a negative 2 over 5. 
parentheses, negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1. When we clean that up, we get 4 over 25. What that means is the slope of the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line to this function, when x equals negative 2, equals 4 over 25. f prime of negative 2 equals 4 over 25. If I want to go further with that, I can, I think the follow-up question says, what does this tell you about the graph? Well, since f prime of negative 2 is a positive number, that tells me that the function is going to be increasing. Okay? Another follow-up question is, determine the equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 2. Well, in order to find the equation of the tangent line, I need two bits of information. I need to know the slope of the tangent line. We already know that. We know that the slope is equal to 4 over 25. The second thing we need is we need to know the coordinates of the point. We know that x equals negative 2, but where do we get that y value? We have to go back to the original function, plug that in, and we're going to get 1 over 5. That's going to be the point on the graph. The equation of the tangent line, we're going to use the point-slope formula. y equals 4 over 25. x minus a negative 2 becomes x plus 2 plus one-fifth. That is the equation of the tangent line. Great, we're done. We took a really complicated function, one over x squared plus one. We found the slope of the tangent line at negative two. We went through all this process to determine the slope of the tangent line is four over 25. Because the slope of the tangent line at negative two is a positive number, the function is increasing. And furthermore, we were able to write the equation of the tangent line at that point using a point-slope form. Awesome. What I want to do in the next part of this video is we're going to go through with a different function. And instead of finding the slope of the tangent line at one point, let's find the slope of the tangent line at all points.